Okay. I realized yesterday uh, when I did this video on the loop, uh, I didn't really explain the how this box actually works. So uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to punch in 72.50. Okay, so now if you look at this, you see it's a 72.50. Okay. And the red light tells you it's tuning. And the blue light, okay, tells you that the motor is active, okay? Uh, and it, it finished already. It's already tuned for 7250. And that the SWR is uh, 1.5 to 1. Uh, anyway, uh, the way this works is this thing has a little transmitter in it and it sends the signal to the antenna and then the motor works the air capacitor that's up on top of the antenna and the air, com air capacitor is basically these aluminum plates evenly spaced on the top of the antenna and they uh you know it's either uh fully uh, meshed or uh, you know, some meshing, you know, or it's out, it's open past where they meet. So, you know, you could have, uh, 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 like on 10 meters, you'll see that the loop is open and there's little to no mesh at all between the, the uh, aluminum square plates that they use. Uh, the, when you're on, uh, let's say 40 meters, you'll see that the antenna is actually, uh, you know, almost fully meshed. Anyway, uh, what happens is, is it, so if I punch in 7250, it, it actually, this little box actually transmits on 7250. And then it works the motor and it finds where uh, the dip is in the SWR by either moving the motor uh, uh, out or in. And it does a pretty good job of remembering. So if I go from like, you know, 20 meters to let's say 40 meters with this thing, because I run the, right now I'm running the baby loop and that does a, uh, uh, 10 meters to 40 meters. And the other one that I have is the, <clears throat> is the uh, MIDI loop, which is the big, you could drive a car through it. You know, it's pretty big. and uh, Not quite, but probably a golf cart. But anyway, it's, it's a big antenna. Uh, that one there does, I think, 20 meters to 80 meters. Anyway, uh, once again, what, what happens here is uh, when it finds the null, then what it'll do is it'll uh, then uh, search for the best match. So this little, this box sends, uh, you know, maybe, a, uh, I don't know, what or two up the coax. Uh, nobody hears anything. You know, it's not exactly uh, putting out, you know, uh, any major power. Technically, uh, that's the way it operates. So when, you know, I jump on the air, uh, nobody hears it. And like I said, it sends the, the, the whatever tiny signal up the coax, and there's another wire, uh, you know, obviously red and black wire that uh, carries the motor voltage. There's no bias T that they use like on the MFJ. This thing has an actual separate uh, thing that uh, powers the, uh, the uh, motor. And the motor opens and closes the air gap on the uh, air capacitor up on top, which is huge. Uh, so pretty much that's, that's the way mm -hmm. it, it tunes. So, uh, if I want to go to 10 meters, for example, let's say I go 28 and so I want to input here, 28, uh, 400. Okay. So you can see it on the bottom. Now I hit enter. Now this could also be done, you know, using, uh, your, uh, uh, your computer port on the back of your rig. They sell the cables that, but I don't use that. Uh, you know, I have one, I think it's, uh, 
Might be for a Yezu or something. I don't know, but I don't bother with that. So I just punch in here, let's say 28.4, and you'll see the red light come on, and then you see the motor light come on, and then you just, it'll tell you, like, it's, you know, wait. And don't transmit. Don't go near your microphone or anything. It's really, uh, you could damage the box, apparently. So, see, now it's done. So right now, I have a 1.8 to 1 on 10, okay? So if I go to 10 meters, you know, uh, it, it'll be fine. And you can uh, touch up with, with the, you know, I have a keypad. You could touch up with the keypad as well. Uh, I don't bother with any of that. You know, maybe I'm lazy. So I just punch in what I'm looking for. And believe it or not, 1.8 is fine. Uh... And uh, I was just uh, working the uh, the schools on the air thing that they have going, uh, the school roundup, and uh, broke a pile up with this thing at 100 watts and got in there after uh, one shot, which was cool. Uh, sometimes I don't get in, you know, uh, it, but it's hit or miss with these things. So it's a compromise. But sometimes I, 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 I'm pretty surprised at, at how this antenna works, you know, and I use the little loop, I'm in an HOA here, so, uh, you know, I, uh, I uh, kind of just leave it in the, in the, in the lanai, and uh, when I want to use it, I just take it out and pop it up on a tripod, and I'm good to go, so, uh, the 80 meter one, if I use it, uh, it'll be at night, because it's pretty big, but like I said, you know, there's no HOA police around here at night. But so far, I've been I've been okay, and uh, I put up a good fight, I guess. Uh, with that, um, I'll show you some of the connections on here. It's basically, you know, it's pretty easy. This uh, comes out of the radio. The jumper cable goes into the back, so that's from the radio to the box. Then over here, you have the antenna uh, plugs into this. This see this gray one here. Right? I don't know, I got one of these on there just in case. Uh, no problems, though, believe it or not. All right, this one here goes to the motor that's on the loop. This one here is the uh, the power, oh, you know, the, uh, looks like a little laptop type thing. And that, uh, that powers this box. And the keypad is a USB, it plugs in the front. And then if you look back here, there's also, uh, see this here? That's where you would hook it up to your computer. This thing, I don't know what the heck this does. Uh, I didn't bother looking. But it works pretty good. So uh, that's that's how that works. I think this is the second generation box. I believe there's an earlier version of this. But this works good. And then I'm running 100 watts here uh, uh, with this radio. And then I have an SGC 2020 that I run at 20 watts. It's capable of 25, but I run it at 20. I run it off a battery. And then uh, I run a uh, FT817 with five watts and and all this stuff works good. So here the wires, the two wires go out to the loop, which is in the, the back here. I don't know if you could see it. <laughs> right, that's the loop. There's the air cap. See, cause it's set to 10, it's open. And then uh, if you look like right there, that thing sticking up has the wire for the uh, motor. Um, and then the motor is that flux capacitor looking thing in the middle. It's like, a, looks like a hydraulic uh, piston, but it's a, like a motor. And uh, I guess some type of stepper motor or whatever, but it works good. And then, uh, so just to give you an idea how that looks and works, but you can see the there's a box on the right, and there's like a spade shaped thing on the left, and and the spade thing goes inside the box, and in the box is like a looks like a, a bread slicer, you know, and uh, and that's the capacitor there. So, and uh, that's how it works. So if I were to go to, uh, let's say, 7100, that thing on the left would kind of be buried inside the thing on the right. And there you go. So that's, uh, that's how it works. 
Um, let's see. So, like I said, I'm just playing around with the stuff in the kitchen. Okay. And, uh, and uh, I'm on the air. Like I said, I worked, uh, I worked a few stations, uh, I think Louisiana State tonight, uh, a couple of dudes on a rag chew, and uh, I worked uh, another college station, I forget where they were, but anyway, I, I got in there, and it works good, and uh, so, let me see something, let me find Okay, so this box here only works with the with the baby loop. The midi loop probably has like a different jumper or EEPROM or something in there. Because this one will not uh, go, let's say if I go to 3900, right? So I inputted 3900. And it tells you the range is 66, uh, see, 66 to 29, 8. So it does almost all of uh, 10 meters. But, all right, so right now it's on, let's say it's on 10 meters. So what I'm going to do, let's do this. We'll go 20, what was it, uh, what was it looking for? Oh, 29, 8. Oh, it does all of 10 meters. I'm sorry. Uh, so we'll do... Here, 29,800, okay? Okay, so let's see. We're getting to the end there. Boop, okay. So now it's fully unmeshed. Now we're going to go to, uh, we'll go to 7 megahertz, so we'll go 7, okay? And let's see how long that takes. Okay, so she's going now. I play the Jeopardy tune, but, you know, I don't have it handy. And it's almost there. Boop, done. So I went all the way from uh, the end of uh, 10 meters to the beginning of 40. And uh, so that's both ends of the antenna uh, as far as spectrum is concerned. And uh, as you can see, it, it didn't take much time at all. What, maybe about 10, 12 seconds? Um, so uh, you'll hear people complain about loops. If you gotta manually tune them, yeah, that, that sucks, but this thing works really good. And as you can see, the SWR here is 1.5 to one. And the antenna is not really out of the, the uh, influence of my house. So if I were to put it at the edge of the property, uh, I know the SWR is lower. So I, even where it is now, uh, 10 feet from the house, it gets a little interference. But I'll tell you what, uh, you'll hear people tell you, oh, they're directional, they're this, they're that. I never go out there to turn it. I plop it on my lawn, and uh, I think the front of my house faces north, so this thing's going east-west. And... I don't touch it. That's it. If I hear them, I, I could work them, you know. It's not always a high signal. You know, they'll tell me, uh, you know, you're 5'9", you're 5'8", or you're 5'4", uh, 5'5", five five, five, whatever. They'll tell me. But it's it's not always a perfect solution, but it works. And uh, so, like I said, it's pretty easy to set up, you know. In, out, power, uh, power to the antenna. Uh, and the USB port on the front, and you could get the uh, the cable from uh, DX Engineering uh, to uh, have the radio command. Uh, you know, when you do a band change, this thing's already you know winding up the uh, the loop uh, for the next band or frequency you're, you're you're on. So that'll even speed things up even more. So. But anyway, just to see, you know, like I said, how it works. Like here, let's, let's, we'll find the, uh, here we'll go to lower side band. See, this radio is weird. Right? Okay. 
So this guy right now is around S7, 7154. So I'm gonna go up, 7154. Okay, so you can see it showing up on my display. Okay. And then you go 1.5 on 7154. Now with this radio, you have to switch sidebands manually, and then you have to shift the the filter passband uh, and you know around from where it says upper side to the left. Oh look, that's John K two Y N. Okay. See? I'm like, just go to dot zero zero. See? I never understood the reason for that other than separation. And now there's enough bandwidth to get, well, like, we just did it. We got separation. Yeah, two kilohertz above and one kilohertz. Right, so now these guys are up. Right up. All right. Let's see where he is. He, the other guy was... All right, he was S7, now he's uh, he's 10 over 9. Now, we weren't even trying to run Europe. That's my point. I'm not chasing the edge. If it happens, it happens. If we're talking and somebody comes in from another country, hey, we'll talk to him. But I'm out of box. Get in here and go, thank you, thank you, the edge. Can anybody over here hear me? Oh, that guy's crying. That's pretty good for uh, a loop antenna. All right. Uh, this is uh, N2ZD. I catch you around the band on my uh, on my loop, my loop de loop. Even uh, Coco's all excited, right, Coco? 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 